also a master trainer for Club Pilates, so I also teach the teacher training and help people become um, Pilates instructors. So one of my favorite Pilates toys is the mini ball. So they named my class the blueberry ball class because some people at corporate, instead of saying grab your balls, they say to grab your blueberry. So there's my little joke to start the class. Um, I have a couple balls here. I am going to use my green one because I did a poll and it, it has more contrast and shows up better with my mat and my black clothes. So you guys joining me today, if you don't have a little ball, I'll give you some options. But I've also had some people take a hoodie sweatshirt, roll it up and cinch it in the hood. And it'll work for a lot of the things that we do to give you that little extra support. Or you can also use a small pillow. I find a hoodie is easier to clean the sweat off of than my couch pillow. Um, and then I heard some people actually using rolls of toilet paper. I thought some people were hoarding it, but maybe they got a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, as with any exercise we do with Pilates, we always want you to honor your body. If you have injuries or issues or concerns that you may need to have to take a modification, do so. I will give you some regressions or progressions, or I usually say nicer, or if you want a little more, you can go here. So pick what level works for your body. Um, and then we're gonna try to get a full body workout playing with the fun little ball. So I am gonna start standing. So if you guys will join me in coming up to a standing position. And I'm gonna turn sideways for view. You can stay wherever you can see your camera if you need to. My goal is to cue you that you don't always have to see me, especially if you're doing this on a phone. I'm gonna put the ball on the front of my thighs and I just have my fingertips, so I'm not death gripping it, just like my fingertips on the ball. And we're gonna start with the roll down. I want your feet to be sits bone, hip bone distance apart where you feel nice and stable. And then we're gonna start with that, taking a big inhale. And as you exhale, I want you to roll the ball down your thighs. Your legs need to be close enough together that the ball doesn't roll through them, right? And just roll it down towards the floor. To your point, right? And then take an inhale, and as you exhale, start by curling the tailbone under and re-stacking your bone, body bone by bone by bone. If you've got some of those osteoporosis, disc injuries, etc., and you need to hinge your body over, do that. Honor what you need, right? And then roll it back down one more time. And then I'm gonna roll it back up. It should feel kind of good. Just a little mobilization. Let me have control with the ball that we're not going too fast. One more of those. So we're gonna nod the chin towards the chest. Roll through our rib cage, thoracic spine, our middle back, our lower back, and then the ball goes towards the floor to your spot, right? And then I want you to roll it all the way back up and stay tall. Okay, I'm gonna turn and face you. So my feet are hip bone distance apart. I'm gonna hold the ball just overhead, like it's a little crown. Okay, I'm gonna soften my hips and knees just a little bit. And then from here, I want a little side bend. So I want you to take one elbow towards your same side hip, come up tall. So I want your spine in a neutral, so I don't want you to tuck or twerk the pelvis. <laughs> side bend and come up. Take a big breath in and just feel a little mobilization of that spine. We just did flexion and extension. So here's some lateral flexion. One more like that. Hold this one to that first side. Now I call this tracing the clock. We're going to round our spine forward, flexing over, rounding to the other side, and then come back up to the 12 o'clock. And now tip over to your second side, flex it forward, round it over, and then bring your ball like a little crown again. Okay? We're going to do that one more time. So I'm going to start to my left, side bending and then flexing and rotating like I'm going around the world and then coming back up. And then I'm gonna start the second side. Side bend to my right, flex and rotate to the range that feels good to you and then bring it back up and stand up tall. All right, now the little ball goes between our thighs. I'm again gonna go side view for an alignment, okay? Ears, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, ideally in alignment. I want you to find your weight balance between your big toe and your little toe and your heel bone. I say suction up your arches because a lot of people fall in onto those insteps. And then from here, we're just gonna do a little squat. So think heels on footwork on the reformer. So we're gonna sit back, pull your belly in and hinge those hips back and then rise back up. So again, start hips and knees and use that ball as a little extra connector, right? 
So hinge back, sit back to your spot. Spine is neutral, we're not arching or hyperextending. And then a little squeeze on the ball as you come tall. I want two more like that. Sit it back, and then really push through those heels and extend everything up. This is nice and slow, right? So hinge it over, and then rise it up. All right, I'm gonna add on to that. So sit back and hold wherever your spot is, okay? Can you shift the weight to the balls of your feet? Yeah. And then stand up, lower your heels. A little train move, okay? So we're gonna sit down into your little squat, find your spot, shift the weight to the balls of the feet. My heels are hovering, quivering. Stand up and lower down. This is harder on a mat than when you're on a hardwood floor. Sit back, belly in, shift to your toes, Rise up tall, lower down. One more of those. Sit it back, shift to the toes, rise up, and lower down. Now we're going to reverse it. Start on a releve, heel lift. Yeah, big toe, little toe, both in contact with your mat. And then lower down into your squat. Pull your belly in, hold. Lower your heels, rise back up. We're gonna do that three more times. Balls of the feet, find your balance. And then slide down your imaginary wall. Your hips and knees are about 90 each. Lower your heels, stand it back up. Yep, you got it. Let's do that again. Balls of the feet, find your balance, abs draw in, and then sit back. Feel the feet and ankle muscles working. Lower your heels, stand back up. One more like that, just nice and slow. Up to the toes, abs in, hinge hips and knees. Now it's like we're doing our balls of the feet on footwork, right? Lower your heels and stand all the way back up. All right, we're gonna take the ball now to the mat between our heels. So we're gonna find our Pilates V or like our first position. I like to put my heels a couple inches up the ball. So if you had a, a pillow or sweatshirt, that works too. Squeeze your heels together. So you're a little bit apart, but I want you to feel that wrapping sensation. And then abs are in. I'm gonna take my arms out to the side. I'm gonna do a little hug a tree motion as I do this, I'm gonna go down into that little plie bend and right back up, okay? So you're almost standing on your ball. Squeeze those heels together the whole time. Lower and lift. Find your range of motion. Your knees should be tracking about that second toe, right? Just like it would on the reformer. And you're not overly turned out. And then zip it up. Inhale and exhale. Keep those abs drawing in. Four more like this, you got it. Bring it up <laughs> and lower it down with control. Control is the name of the game with Pilates. Concentrate on your movements. Find fluidity, fluidity and control. All right, hold this one up. Now I just want you to squeeze your heels together. A little kind of like wah, wah, pulse of the booty. Feel those glutes, those deep hip rotators. Four, three, two, and one. Release your heels, find your ball. All right, we're gonna put it back between our thighs. I'm gonna go sideways again for the viewing angle. We're gonna do a squat in a stagger. So I want your right foot still like train track, right? So we're gonna get closer together, your ball width apart. My heel and toe of my feet would be lined up if I were on a balance speed. Tighten up those abs, find that neutral spine. And now we're gonna come up to a little hover. You can keep your front heel down if you need to for balance but your back one has to stay up a little bit for angle and knee. Now hinge over, find your little stagger squat. Keep some pressure on that ball. It's giving you a little diagonal. So you're getting a little inner thigh, a little hip flexor, a little hamstring, and then the glutes and quads, yeah? And hamstrings are pulling you down. Breathe in <laughs> and out. Four more like this. Again, you can, Lower down to your range that you can keep a neutral spine and no pain in your knee or hip joints. And again, that front heel can stay down if you need it a little bit nicer. I want two more. And then hold this one. Find the spot that you can hold it down. I don't care how low it is. You may be lower than me, you may not be as low as me. That's okay. Shoulders are down, spine is long. Now press on your ball. A little, a little inflate, deflate of that ball. Four, three, two, one. Stand all the way up. Switch your feet. So now the other foot goes forward. I have my left foot forward, but as long as you switch sides, square your hips and shoulders, 
Find your neutral spine, ribs connect on the front, abs engage. Find where your hands are to help you balance. Just make sure your shoulders are down. Up on the balls of the feet if you can, or the front heel could be down. Now we go down, down, up, up. So this is mimicking some of our single leg footwork with a little balance challenge. Get the sits bones being pulled down to your heels with the hamstrings, the back of the thigh. Your quads and glutes are working, but make that the main thing. Think about the pulling yourself down while keeping a little pressure on your ball. Can you do three more? Ready? We're gonna hold this one down. Find your spot. Where can you go? I don't care how low. Find your range. Now, press on your ball. Inflate, deflate your little ball. Or your towel or pillow. Or it can be imaginary. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. And stand all the way up. All right, I got one more standing leg for you. Put the ball on the mat and put your right foot on it. My foot is just barely in front of my other foot in alignment. I want to make sure my hips are level. I like to say that contractor level is across my hip bones with the bubble staying at the belly button. Okay, come down into a little squat and then back up, okay? Find a little bit of pressure in both feet. Now I want you to think, stomp the ball with the foot on the ball, right? Four, three, two, hold the pressure on the ball. Roll it from heel to toe. Don't move anything else. Yeah. Got it? You feeling it? Yeah. Yeah. Three, two, it's about the standing leg, right? Yeah. Stand all the way up. Okay, carefully so you don't lose your ball. Yeah. I'm just gonna roll it, there we go. Okay, put it under the other foot. Neutral spine, ribs connected on the front, other foot on the ball. Sit down and up a couple times, finding where you feel level hips, Stable core. Okay, hold this one down. Now give me the little push on the ball. Like you're trying to stomp it a little bit. Push from that butt where the thigh and the butt meet. Three, two, now hold it. Roll it heel to toe. Little hamstring curl. Roll it out and in. Three, two, last time. Bring it in. And then we are gonna come down to the mat now, okay? So hopefully you feel warm now. I'm warm. <laughs> okay, so you guys, I'm gonna give you a little facing view. I'm gonna put my fingers on the ball, like it's a wheel axis, okay? So it can kind of spin. And then I want you to sit with your knees bent, feet out in front of you, and put the ball by your ankle shin, the lower part of your shin bone. And sit up nice and tall in your neutral spine. Your legs are close enough together again that the ball will not fall between your legs, okay? And then we're gonna roll the ball up our shins as we do a little half roll back, a little posterior tilt, and then sit back up top. Okay? So I just want you to find the back edge of your sits bones and a long flexion. So it's not a deep crunch. It's a little like just roll the ball to your shin, knee, and up. One more time. Roll it back. It's warming that up a little bit. And back up. All right. Put the ball behind your tailbone. So we're gonna put it right behind the sacrum low back area. I call it a little bunny tail. It also is gonna act as a door stopper so we don't slip away. If you need this nicer or you don't have the ball or ball pillow, put your hands behind your thighs. Otherwise, if you can, reach your arms out. We're gonna find that same little imprint that we just had rolling the ball on our shin, but now we're pulling the belly button into the ball and we're in that long flexion right there, okay? And then come back out of that, okay? Let's find that again. Exhale, curl your tailbone under just a little bit, just the back edge of those six bones, and then lean back so you're about a 45 degree angle. Pull your belly in. All right, we call these earthquakes. Now, can you lift your arms up to the sky? Should have changed it just a little bit. Bring it back down. Bring your hands to the sky. Can you kick your eye gaze up to the sky? Might have changed things. You might have got a little increased quiver. Bring your hands back down. Sit back up, okay? I'm gonna add on to that. We're gonna curl the tailbone under, roll back, pull the belly in, about a 45 degree angle back, no further, and no arching over, okay? Now take one arm up and one arm down. Eye gaze can go up to the sky for a little different vestibular challenge. 
meaning making your brain work, <laughs> or it can stay straight ahead on a focal point. You should start getting a little quiver in your abs. One more time. And bring yourself all the way up. All right, we're gonna pr progress this into a little more. Keep the little bunny tail. Find that same angle, the little posterior tilts, and then straight neutral spine to come back. You can put your hands on the mat or behind your thighs if you need a little bit of help here. I want you to bring one leg up to tabletop, put it back down, and then the other. Just a couple little knee folds, finding that tabletop just to see where you're at here, okay? Now, can you bring one up and hold it? How about the other one to join in? Now from here, toe tap. One leg stays at table and then comes back up, and the other one. Fingertips can be on the mat, or you can reach them up like you're in a little teaser, because you kind of are. <laughs> Doing a little toe tap here. Two, one, both feet down, and sit yourself up. That should have warmed your abs up a little bit, yeah? I answer myself a lot, so yeah, I listen to myself. All right, <laughs> find that same little pose to your tilt, pull your belly in, and lean back a little bit. From here, I want to do a little hip uh, um, mobility or a heel slide. So I'm going to slide one leg straight forward, turn it out a little bit, pull it in so it's kind of in your frog shape, and then back up. Stay on the same one. We're going to slide the leg out in parallel, turn it out, and then drag like your pinky toe back in towards you, back up to neutral parallel. One more time. Press it out, turn it out, draw it in, and back up. And then sit all the way up for a moment. Okay. Same thing, other leg. So find your little posterior tilt, pull the belly in, shoulders down, and lean back. Now take your other leg straight out, turn it out, drag it in, and up. So we're challenging the abdominals to hold this still as we do that little hip mobility. Bring it in and sit it back up. All right, so we are going to go um, down to the ball between our shoulder blades. So if you'll take your little ball and meet me, roll back until it's under your shoulder blades. So kind of between the points of your shoulder blades, adjust it if you need to. And then I want you to find either neutral spine or a slight imprint, but I want there to be space under your back, right? And I want us to stay the same. If your neck gets fatigued, put your hands behind your head. Otherwise, to start with, I want a little scapular movement. So I just want you to protract or reach your fingertips away from you, opening up your shoulder blades, and then think, hug the ball with your shoulder blades. So we open and close. Reach and close. Two more of those, just protract away, retract. So good if you've been spending a lot of time with the computer. Now hold that little bit of retraction. Ribs are connected on the front. And I want you to take both hands overhead, circle them out to the side, and back to your shin. This is just a little scapular isolation, still challenging your abdominals. Breathe as you reach up, open and close. One more this direction. Inhale up, exhale, circle around, pause. Reverse your circle. Open out to the side, meet overhead, and pull your hands down towards your thighs. Breathe in, keep those abdominals engaged. They're stabilizing your spine. Open, up, and around. We're gonna do one more circle. Open, up, and around. All right, so now I want you to put your hands behind your head, and I want your elbows slightly in your peripheral vision, and then think long through the back of your neck. My cue is channel your inner giraffe. So I want a long flexion of that neck. So you're not dropping your chin to your chest, but nod your forehead, and then push those occipital bones, the base of your skull, into your hands, okay? Now, from here, I want you to keep your pelvis still and extend back over the ball for a little thoracic opener, and then come right back to that neutral starting position, okay? Inhale as you extend back over the ball. I gaze goes towards your ceiling. Exhale, ribs to hips to come back. Inhale, back over your ball. Exhale, back to neutral and hold. Now, come up further into flexion, back to your neutral. Up further into a little more flexion, Really feel like you're doing that little chest lift ab prep where your ribs slide to your hips. One more like that, please keep breathing. Now, from here we're gonna put it together. So we're gonna extend over the ball, get a little stretch, and then you gotta activate it back up. You guys, my lumbo pelvic, lower back and pelvis spine are not moving, just my rib cage spine. 
and my head's staying in line with that. So I'm pushing my head into my hands, right? We're gonna do one more of these. Extend back and then flex. Now meet me in neutral, okay? So you're not flexed or extended really in that spine. You're just on it. Pull the belly in. Now, we're gonna prep our rotation. I want you to rotate your right elbow towards the floor. The ball moved an inch between your shoulder blades. Come back to the center. Your legs don't move. Just roll the ball an inch. Find your obliques, the side of the waist, right? So I want you guys to remember this, because when we do our crisscross abs a little bit later, um, some of you may want to go back to this, because it'll be a little bit nicer than my fun progression. You should be worried when I say fun. One more time to the right. <laughs> One more time to the left. And then extend back over there. Go ahead and just let your head and chest support your head, so find the range that works for you. And take a big breath in. All right, so from here, we're gonna come back up into that little bit of flexion. The ball, I want you to think inflated, right? So instead of just hanging out on it, lift it up a little bit. If you still need to support your head, put your hands there. I would like you to bring your right leg to tabletop, your arms reach long, long. we're in a little long flexion. Now, you can keep one tippy toe on the floor the whole time. We're gonna do hundreds. I'm gonna count 50 with one, just barely tippy toe touching, and then I'm gonna switch for the other 50. I'm not the best counter. Those of you that know me, I'm going to try my best. Ready? Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Reach that leg lower and longer from the seat. Breathe in and out. One more big inhale. Exhale, keep pumping your arms and switch your legs. Start with the leg in the same angle of your thighs as you inhale. And exhale. Yeah, you get a little bonus because of transition. Can you lower your leg every time you exhale? Inhale, fill your lungs. Exhale out. We have two more. Inhale. It's 100-ish. Lower it down because I didn't count the transition. Pump your arms. Keep the ball inflated. Lower it. Reach it long, long, long. Both feet down. And release. Go ahead and roll yourself up. All right. I want you to bring the little ball. And we're going to put it under your toes, okay? So the toes are on the ball. And then you can use the back of your thighs if you need to, and I want you to bring yourself back down to the mat, okay? So check that your feet are pretty close together and you can straighten the legs and bend the legs without losing the ball, okay? So you all probably know double leg stretch. If not, I'll tell you how it goes. You can keep head and shoulder down or hands behind your head if you need to. On your exhale, give me that long flexion, curling your chest up, just like we were just doing on the ball. My knees stay bent. Now, as I inhale, I roll the ball away, reach my arms overhead. Exhale, circle around and pull the ball in with a little bit of hamstring, right? Reach, exhale, pull. Inhale, reach, exhale, pull. I'm trying to pretend that that inflated ball is still under my shoulder blades. Give me two more. Inhale, reach, exhale, scoop. Inhale, reach, exhale, scoop, and roll your head and shoulders down. All right, put the ball under your right leg, like Achilles heel bone area, and then bring your left leg to tabletop. Check your alignment. Are your ribs level away from your hips, even hip and rib? So we're not hip hiking. So think that sits bone of the leg in the air is even with the other one, okay? Draw those abdominals in. I want your right leg that you put on the ball to think, activate your seat, to push down into the ball a little bit, okay? You can keep the leg at tabletop or all the way up to the sky. We're gonna do our one leg circle. Y'all, your circle can be as big or small and you can control your hip and pelvis movement, right? So it might be like sprinkler head, dinner plate, or it might be full range. Find your range, go cross your body, down, exhale, pause up. Inhale, down and around. Exhale as you come up. Three more. Inhale, exhale up. Keep pushing into that ball. When you get to the top, pause. Now reverse your circle. Go away from your body. Down and up. Keep pushing that heel down to the ball. You should feel that hamstring activate. Inhale, exhale up. Inhale around, exhale up. Last time on this side. And bring it all the way up, bend the knee, bend the other knee, find the ball. So if you do a foot exchange, that's the goal here. And then roll the left leg out, get it right under the Achilles or heel area. 
somewhere between the heel and the calf, right? And then bring your right leg to tabletop, check into those abs, compress those abdominals a little bit so that left hip is open across the front and active in the seat. Okay, now take the right leg up to the sky, keeping the knee bent if you need a little bit nicer. As you inhale, go across your body, exhale down, pause up. Inhale around, exhale up. Inhale around, exhale up. Finding your circle size that works for your body. Pause, ready? Other way, take it outside of the body, across the midline and up. Breathe. One more circle, pushing down into that ball, and then breathe. All right, I'm gonna get my ball so I don't lose it. And now we're gonna roll up, so I want you to meet me into seated, up and seated, so you can roll yourself up or rock yourself up, whatever works for you. Okay, ball is gonna go between our knees, and we're gonna do a little like rolling like a ball balance to a little teaser fun, okay? We're not gonna do big move, just more of a balance. So we're gonna find that back edge of the sits bones like we did when we had the ball there, but now the ball's between our knees, okay? Squeeze the ball a little bit, and then can you just come up and just hover balance in that little rounded shape, yeah? Now, straighten one leg up. You can always put a foot on the mat if you need to, or your hands, right? And then bring it back to your little tuck balance. Straighten the other leg. Now, can you give them a little switch in space? Maybe your arms reach up. Maybe your arms stay on the mat. You find your spot or behind your thighs. Can you straighten both legs and find your teaser? Squeeze the ball. Straighten or bend your knees. Oh, five, four, whatever you got. Three, two, maybe your arms go up to your ears for the last one. <laughs> down. I hope I helped you do that with my cueing there. <laughs> okay. So, guys, we're gonna um, roll ourselves back to our back, ball in your hands, because we gotta finish our series of five. We only did a couple of them, right? So, use your little axis, roll the ball up your shin, curl your tailbone under, roll it down your thighs, clear all the way down. Only because that's more fun. <laughs> okay. Bring your legs up to tabletop. And then find your neutral spine if you can. If you need it a little bit nicer to pre engage your abs or protect your back, you can always go into an imprint when our legs are in the air. Now, straighten your legs up to the sky. We're going to our single straight leg stretch, AKA scissors, okay? So curling head and chest up if that works for you. I want you to take one leg long and reach as you pull the other one into the ball. And then meet both legs on the ball. And then take the other one away. Pull your shin into the wall. But your hands are holding it there so it doesn't go anywhere. And switch. Inhale, both legs are up. Exhale, reach. You can add that extra little pulse if you want, but my extra pulse is pulling into the ball. <sighs> Inhale it up. Exhale it reach. Can you do one more on each leg? You can. <sighs> you can always have your legs bent. <sighs> and then bend your knees and lower everything back down. Take a little hug your rock side to side if you need to. So our single straight leg stretch is we're going to roll the ball up and down our shin as we do it. Okay? It'll make sense in a second. So straighten your legs up like you just did for scissors. We're gonna rotate to our tiny Pilates knees. So kiss your heels together and open up a little bit. Curl your head and chest up so the ball will go part way up your shins, okay? Now, as you lower your legs away, roll the ball down towards your knees. Now here's where you put pressure into it as you pull your legs back up. Lower and lift. Yeah, and you can have your knees bent if you need to. You can keep head and shoulders down and have this against your thighs. I want two more if you're up for the challenge. You can always take a rest. Bend your knees and hug it in. That was fun, right? <laughs> I, like, I like to add some extra challenges to some of these moves. All right, so from here, I want you to put the ball between your, um, oh, sorry, we gotta do crisscross. I almost skipped my favorite variation. So if you remember, when we had our shoulder blades on the ball, I gave you that little, like, remember this, rotate. Okay, here's my fun crisscross. I want the balls by your kneecaps, but not between them. And then your elbows scooping to the ball. And then I'm gonna straighten one leg and let go with the other elbow and twist. I'm pushing elbow and knee together, and then I'm gonna meet, hugging the ball to pass it. Bring it back to center and pass it. 
You can hold the ball in your hand and just reach it outside of your legs if this is not the right range of motion for you today. Find your level. And oblique ring out that way. It's like it's that kitchen sponge and you gotta get all the water out. One more time each side. This is first side for me. Bring it in. Second side, bring it in. And lower everything down. Aren't you glad I didn't forget that one? <laughs> Put the ball between your knees, between your thighs, right above your knees, so you can still move your knees. It's time for some bridging. Okay? So if your spine is okay with articulation, that's what I'm gonna cue. So give me just a little pelvic tilt first, so your little imprints and release, like the 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, just to check your alignment. Now, I want your legs close enough together that you have a little pressure on the ball, but you're not trying to pop it. Hands down by your side, we're gonna peel up to your shoulder blades, one bone at a time. So as you exhale, give me the pelvic curl, and then peel your low back, your rib cage back, shoulder blades, and the knees reach over toes. There should be no stress on your neck whatsoever. Reach those knees long, squeeze your ball, release the squeeze, and then melt yourself back down from the sternum, softening the rib cage, the lower ribs, the low back, and then the tailbone, okay? So I have an add-on for that. You can keep doing that if you want. I want you to, if you can reach your hands up, as a little challenge, hands can stay down, right? I'm gonna reach hands to the sky, curl your pelvis up, same little bridge you just did, just with the arms up. Reach long, find a nice long spine. Your butt should be engaged. You think front of the hips open, right? Now melt it down, slow. Hold the melt down, curl your head and chest up. Grab the little ball, roll it back. Take an inhale. Exhale, curl up, put the ball back between your knees. Lower head and shoulders. Peel your spine back up into your bridge. Hold for an inhale, squeeze. Exhale, melt your spine back down. Inhale, exhale, curl up, find your ball. Roll your head and shoulders down, ball to the sky. Peel your pelvis up. Melt your spine back down. Chest lift up to put the ball back between your thighs. Lower back down, hold your bridge. All right, now we're gonna pelvic lift hip hinge bridge. So brace your abs, tighten them like you thought I was gonna punch you in the gut. I promise I won't. It's kind of hard to do it through the computer. So <laughs> tighten your abs and hinge, lift up like a drawbridge. Knees over toes, right there. Drop your hips back down to the mat, okay? Tighten core first, abs, back muscles, spine sandwich, and then lift it up. Knees reach long, okay? You can stick with that. I got an add-on for you right here. Can you extend your left leg? Now, hips are level, that contractor level is across your uh, hip bones or um, hip crease, right? Don't drop it. Now, I want your left leg to try to push that right leg away, push into the ball, but the right leg's pushing back and you're not going anywhere. But you're feeling both inner thigh muscles activate while everything in the rest of your body is holding you strong. Put that foot back down. Reset and realign if you need to. Otherwise, hold that bridge. Take the right leg out. Now the right leg pushes into the ball. Left leg doesn't let it push your leg away. You're, you're having a little tug of war with the ball. Put the foot down, drop your hips back down to the mat. Can we do that one more time? Sure. Okay, <laughs> lift up to your bridge, draw bridge up, tighten your core, pull it in the abs, open up the front of the hips, activates the backside. Take the left leg out long. Now give me the tug of war. Push, but don't let it go anywhere. Push, but don't let it go anywhere. Push, but don't let it go anywhere. Put that foot back down. Take a breath in case you were holding it. Take the right leg out. Your thighs are in line with each other. Push and pull, push and pull, push and pull. You got it. Bring it down. And hips come all the way back down. All right. From here, I would like you to take the ball out from between your legs. And then we are going to go onto our bellies. So roll yourself over. So this is a little um, variation of swan that I like to do with the ball. So if you'll take your feet um, a little bit apart, like maybe the width of your mat, and then the ball is gonna go out in front of you. You're gonna hover your nose off of the floor. I want both hands on the ball, okay? And then you guys, I want you to find pubic bone pressing into the mat, so you lengthen that low back, pulling the belly in like you have a hot coal or a tack on your belly. And I do not want you to get stuck or burned, okay? Now, we're gonna bend our elbows and pull 
the ball in a little bit as we lift up into our swan. It can be a small swan. You don't have to come all the way up yet. So again, activate abs, pubic bone down, and then bend your elbows, slide your shoulder blades down, come into your little bit of thoracic extension, and then roll it back down. Of course, I like add-ons. So from here, I want you to start bending your knees into grasshopper, crisscrossing your ankles as you come into your little swan, and then straighten your legs and lower your torso. Do that again. Start rolling the ball in, crisscross your ankles by just bending your knees, coming into a small swan, and then lower it back down. We're gonna do that two more times. If you can have the other ankle on top, bonus points. Roll it back, bend your knees to crisscross your ankles, that pubic bone's pressing down, lengthen back out. One more time, roll it in, crisscross your ankle, pull the belly in, stay out of your low back, and roll it back down. Take a pause here. If you want a little add-on, you can repeat what we just did. I'm gonna go up a level with a straight arm swan, okay? Legs are active, a little bit apart, pubic bone down, protect that low back by activating your belly. Now roll the ball towards you with straight arms into your swan, and then take it back down, okay? Do that again. Again, you can stay with the bent elbow version if that's better for your body. Long from the crown of the head, no pes dispenser necks. Keep that neck reaching long. All right, I'm gonna add a swan dive to this. If you're up for it, join me. If not, keep doing that same swan. So come up to this swan, Bent elbow or straight elbow, whichever works for you. Now keep that tush on fire. Your booty needs to work. Slide the ball forward, rock forward onto the edge of your rib cage. Come back up, don't shut those cheeks off. Tip it forward. Bend for the fanny. <laughs> Pull it up. So the ball's rolling you into your swan dive. You're coming up, last time, roll it. Come back up, put the ball in one hand, press right back into your shell. It's hard to press up with the ball in both hands. Now, put both hands back on the ball, and then round your spine, set your hips back towards your heels as much as your knees and hips will let you, and open up that low back. Breathe. And then bring yourself. I got two more prone exercises. We're gonna swim, but it's a little variation of swimming, okay? So hands are out on the ball, long. So think we're gonna come into our little, like, Superman shape, right? We're all superheroes right now fighting this virus, right? Okay, belly lifted, back neutral. Now, I want you to lift the left leg from the seat, and as you do, push your left hand stronger into the ball, and then release that. And then the same thing, other side. Lift the right leg long, pushing the right hand into the ball, and then bring it back down. And do that again. Alternating sides. So push down with the same side you're lifting, which makes it feel like your opposite arm is lifting, right? But we're not actually leaving the ball. And you lift. Yeah, you got it. And lift one more time. And then bring it in. All right, take the ball and put it between your feet. So you, you guys, I like this between my arches. If I put it between my ankles, I tend to lose it. So just kind of heel to toe holding the ball. Stack your hands, make them a little forehead pillow. I'm going to turn my head to the side so I can see you. <laughs> sort of see. Now, I want your knees at about 90 degrees, and you're going to squeeze the ball. Now, zip up your belly. Pull that belly off of the tack. Squeeze your butt. Can you lift your knees two inches off of the mat? Maybe. Just small. Just a little hip extension with a heel squeeze. Four, three, two, and one. Take a pause. All right, if you know double leg kick, that's where I'm going next, which is why it's important that you don't drop your ball. All right, now we turn our head to one side and your hands go on your back. So I'm gonna keep with my superhero theme. I call this the Iron Man flying. So we're gonna do three hamstring curls. So pull your heels to your hips, straighten your legs. Heels in, straighten, heels in. Now this time as you straighten, I want you to come up into your long line, just hovering. And now your hands are like Iron Man flying with these turbo jets, right? As you come back down, turn your head to the other side. We need three hamstring curls. Energy, pull the hips, it heels into the hips. And then on this third one, you extend up the Iron Man flying. The Superman didn't save the day, so Iron Man's trying to help. <laughs> Go the other way. Entertaining myself, because you aren't talking back. Three more pulls. And then on this third one, extend up, reach long, long, long. 
Squeeze your toes, pull your belly in. Last time, turn your head to the other side. Three hamstring curls or the double leg kick. Pull it in and then reach it long. The iron man find your little turbo jack to get your shoulder blades are down your back, your head and neck are long. And bring it all the way in. Bend your knees enough to take the ball out between your feet and come up into a kneeling position. You need to double or triple your mat up for a push on your kneecap so you can go there. We're going to go right into our cat here. So if you guys will go hands under um, your shoulders and knees under your hips, okay? I want you to articulate your spine. The ball is between my thighs. I'm just going to give a little squeeze as I nod chin to chest and round up like that mad, angry Halloween cat. Or extend tail to head to come back to a long run. Do not dump your low back. Think long and extend that giraffe neck again, right? All right, curl your chin towards your chest, round your spine up, opening your shoulder blades, pushing away from the mat with your hands and your knees. Breathe in, extend, think lengthen your hamstrings as that tailbone goes out. Articulate your spine. No hesitance or neck, looking towards the end of your mat. All right, we're gonna do that one more time. It should feel really good after that like, um, crumb work. Now round that spine up, pressing away, pulling the belly up, 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 away from the floor, and extend it back out. All right, we're gonna go into a little plank, kind of a hover plank series. If you need to go down to your forearms, by all means do so. If you're staying on your hands, please don't hyper receive your elbows. I like to spread my hands wide and feel like I'm opening a jar, like spiraling and feeling my shoulder blades connect, like a little J on my back as I do this, okay? Lift your rib cage, activate those abs, tuck your toes under, and just hover your knees a couple inches off the floor if you can. Breathe, hold it. Just abs in, stabilizing, breathing. Lower your knees down. Okay, I'm gonna add a little twist to that from the pelvis or hips, okay? So strong, toes tucked, lift, find your hover. Now, twist your knees to the left and to the right. Keep your rib cage and shoulders still, and then turn your knees from the pelvis a little bit away, a little bit away. Bring it back center, neutral spine, Rest it down. All right, from here, we're gonna go into a um, upstretch variation, which is basically pike to plank. Articulate it a little if you can. Forearms are fine if you need to, right? Strong your shoulders, lift your ribs, tuck your toes under, and then shift back into a little pike, or that down dog elephant shape and flex, okay? Now, I want you to start by lifting your heels up and then articulating pelvis, back, shoulders, so in your nice long plank. Breathe, keep a little pressure on the ball, and now we're gonna nod, chin, chest, articulate, tail to head, to find that nice inverted V. Heels down if you can, give a little stretch. Shift back to your toes, drop your pelvis, articulate your spine, back to your plank. Again, this can be done on your forearms. If not, keep unscrewing that jar link. And then articulate chin, chest. This is like upstretch, which is a forward band's move of the reformer. And then we do this one more time. Bring the pelvis down, head in line, find your nice long plank. Squeeze that ball. Can you tap your knees down? And up for four more. <sighs> Holding everything else still, just a little knee and ankle move. Uh huh. Last time. <sighs> knees down. Sit back into a little shell. Stretch out your shoulders and your wrists. All right, it's time to take the ball out from our legs, and we're gonna go to our side, okay? So I'm gonna go ball on the rib cage. So I'm gonna lay down on my right side towards the back edge of my mat. And then for this first one, if you bring your bottom leg to like a tabletop as a kickstand, and then I want your top leg parallel in line with your shoulders and hips. In step pushing down. I, want, I don't want it to come up in there. I want you to push down so you feel the energy there. Now, take the shape of your ball and then come up to your diagonal line. We're going to see if we can lift that bottom arm. Can you just come up? It's small, you guys. Take the shape of the ball and then come up to your diagonal line. We're not trying to flex up. We're flexing over into a diagonal line. Now, Superman is flying to the side. Or maybe we're Wonder Woman now. <laughs> side bend, lift, two more. Side bend, lift, hold, 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 and then bring it in. Come to your forearm and take the ball out from under your rib cage. Put it between your knees. You can do this down here as well. Otherwise, we're on our um, bottom hip and shoulders strong. 
lifting our ribs, trying to stay in a neutral spine and not sink down, right? So get that all active. And from here, we're gonna do a little clam. So I'm all lined up here, and I'm gonna think, squeeze the ball, inflate it, and deflate it. Inner thighs, hip rotators, pelvic floor zipping up. Those obliques are still lifting. This lat is strong. Uh-huh, squeeze, press, two, and one. Now, hold the press with that top knee. Can you lift your heel? So now we're in a little internal rotation. Find those abdominals. They should be like sinking in right here or tightening in. Still strong on the bottom side. Two more, one more, and then bring yourself down to your side. Support your head, straighten both legs out. And then I want you to lift the feet up so you're in a long line hover. Your top hand is your kickstand. Now, we're going to think a little swimming on our side. I want you to energize into that ball and give me a little small flutter. Your lateral hips and inner thighs and obliques are all working. Three, two, one, and bring it down. All right, bring yourself up so we need to repeat that on the other side before I run out of time. Ball under your rib cage. Lay it down. Bottom leg as that tabletop kicks in. Top leg pressing in. Reach those legs long, pushing that top foot in, arms long. Bottom hand can stay on the mat and help you if you need it. Otherwise, we lift up a little bit, take the shape. Lift up a little bit, take the shape. Lift. Small little oblique crunch here. Three, two, one, hold, and then bring that forearm down. All right, bend the knees. Your spine is lined up with the back of your mat. Your heels are in line with that. Ribs lifted, shoulders strong, fall between your knees. Yeah, you're all set up. Now, clamshell sort of feels like reverse, right? We're inflating and deflating the ball. Find your obliques, your lat, and then internal rotators, pressing down, pressing. Uh-huh. For three, two. Hold the little press down. Now, can you lift the heel? Keeping the knee pressing into the ball. Little reverse clam. Mm -hmm. Feel that kind of deep in there? Yep, some of those deep hip flexors are engaging as well. Two more. One. Very good. All right. Ball stays. We lower down. Support your head. Lift both legs so they're just hovering and giving a little flutter. Like you're rolling the ball forward and back just a little bit. A little flutter. Breathe. Three, two, and one, and bring it down. And then bring yourself up to seated for me. All right. I would like you to sit with your legs out long in front of you and put the ball outside of, sorry, separate your feet. I <laughs> said so, so that was, Separate your feet, put the ball on the inside of your right shin and take your left right arm. Left arm on the ball, right arm back. We're gonna do soft. So we're gonna roll it along our pinky finger as we flex forward, come back up. So we're already in rotation, right? And then we're gonna flex forward and roll the ball up. Sorry, I confused you on my setup there. Sit top, press down as you flex it forward, bring it up. One more there, flex it forward, bring it up, switch. Now we got the ball on the inside of the other leg in our little straddle. Rotate and then flex forward and bring it up. Flex forward and bring it up. One more time. Actually, right here's the last one. Flex and bring it up. All right. Bend your knees so we're kind of like how we started the class, right? Now, this is like twist with pulses with the roll down bar. I'm going to reach back into that rotation, but now the ball is at the edge of my mat behind me, and my fingertip is on it. I'm going to keep my left arm lined up with my left knee, as if I had that roll-down bar on the springboard, right, or the Cadillac. And then I'm already a little rotated. Now I'm not flexing my spine. I'm going to lean and come up an inch and down an inch. Feel those obliques and that armpit lat muscle. Two. Give me one more. Pump stretch here, y'all. And bring it up. Take the ball to the other hand behind you so we're a little bit rotated. Right arm lined up with right knee. Look towards your hand. Lean back in the neutral spine. Come back up. Lean back. Come back up. Little twist with pulses. Three more little pulses. 
two and one and bring it up take that ball back to the axis right where it rolls on your shins roll the ball down your shins flexing forward looking towards your belly button flexing that spine over and then roll the ball back up your shins to a tall spine a couple little spine stretches to finish this off here flex it forward rolling the ball towards your toes and then roll it back to your nose <laughs> one more time flex it forward and then bring it up can you put the ball close to your hips behind you with both hands on it my elbows are bent and now i'm going to think a little chest expansion y'all so i'm going to press the ball away and then lift up out of my hip bones and think open my heart a little bit you can roll that ball away if you've got a lot of shoulder mobility otherwise just keep it close to you and just press down as you lift your heart and sternum into like a little chest expansion stretch one more time, press the ball to your spot, lift your heart, lift your sternum, breathe. And release that. Sit crisscross applesauce for me. Last 30 seconds here. The ball is in my right hand, elbow bent, left hand out to the side. If I'm here, do whichever side feels best to you right now. Free hand is gonna go up and over. We're gonna roll the ball away as we laterally flex into our mermaid. Breathe and then roll the ball back in, come up tall. One more time. Roll the ball out, laterally flex your spine, here goes towards your shoulder, breathe, and then bring it back up. Switch the ball to the other side, free hand out, elbow bent to start, straighten the arm as you flex up and over, keeping your hips anchored, bring it back up top, one more time, reach up and over, big inhale, bring it all the way up, and y'all, I am done with you and the little ball today. I have lots more, but that's all the time I have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to be part of National Pilates Day here at Club Pilates. Um, if you guys go to nationalpilatesday.com, there is a link to a fundraiser to Feeding America. You're more than welcome to go there. Um, otherwise, this is going on for a few more hours today. Feel free to pop in and watch or participate in as much or little as you have. And again, I really appreciate you guys joining me. If you uh, have your video on, if they switch it to gallery, I think they can do a quick screenshot and I can see who is here today. I really appreciate you guys coming. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Kara. Thank you. Oh, there's lots of us. Thanks. Thanks, Kara. Thanks so much. I miss I miss Pilates and I miss the group. I know. I tried to do some like reformer on the mat with the ball stuff. So <laughs> thanks so much, Kara. That was great. Great. Thanks, Kara. Oh. Oh, my twin was on. She <laughs> 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 had an identical twin. So she did a lot of today. Thank you, Kara. Great job. Thank you. Thank you.